You had it all the time. I did not. <laughs> you two are spoiling my daughter rotten. Do you realize that? That's not hard to do, Mrs. Lefton. Mr. Hawks, just found out what I'd done wrong when I pulled my wagon out of line today. See, what I'd done was cross my lines when I snapped them back into these thingamajigs. Every time I pulled G on that off horse, he went haw. Gee, that's funny. Ha, ha, ha. Marie, you'll have to forgive her. She gets that from her father. That's all right, Marie. Just as long as you and me can laugh at your old daddy's mistakes, we'll make out. Don't you worry. A lot of people get their lines crossed, Mr. Caleb. Main thing is, I know what I've done wrong. I won't do it again. If you love to it, we'll practice some more tomorrow afternoon. Anytime you say, Mr. Hawks. I sure want to do what's right. Good. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. You know, Bill, them lefties sure nice family, ain't they? Yeah, they make a man wonder how he has nerve enough to complain about anything, Charlie. Yeah. And that one makes a man complain about being alive. Mr. Hale, I think it's time you and I came to an understanding. I thought we had that before we left St. Joseph. And so did I. But apparently there are two interpretations of the same set of rules. If there are, I wasn't aware of it. What is it you wanted to say to me? I presume you're familiar with this list. Well, that's hardly surprising, since I wrote it. It's the rules of the wagon train. How long since you've read these rules, Mr. Hale? Recently enough to remember that the rule in there about overloading wagons, and your wagon, Mr. Gatsby, is overloaded. Yes, so you've mentioned several times. I, uh, I presume, Mr. Hale, that your primary concern is that my team might uh, drop out, lag behind, otherwise hold up the progress of the entire train? Would you care to tell me just what is on your mind, Mr. Gatsby? this. This train is already being held up. Now, we've wasted two days here with your nonsensical drilling and uh, teaching new people how to drive. It could be that I feel a couple of days spent here could save us a month and possible disaster farther on west. Could be. But the time you're spending here is for the sake of one wagon and not for the good of the entire train. I hardly think it's your place to make that kind of a decision. I'm only asserting my own rights, Mr. Hale. Now, when I signed up for this wagon train, I made certain concessions, such as obtaining the best equipment that money could buy, assuring myself an adequate stock of supplies, giving up, willingly, a way of life to which my wife and I are accustomed. Now, we have been abiding by these rules faithfully, Mr. Hale. I think that we have the right to expect everyone else to do the same thing. The Leftons are not doing it. Caleb Lefton needs more help than the others. He's getting that help. Mr. Hale, Rule seven, the first 10 days for all new people joining the train is a probationary period. Within that time, any wagon found delaying progress because of faulty equipment or inability of driver shall be dropped from the train and returned to St. Joseph or to where they joined. I'm familiar with the rules. I demand that you drop the leftins and send them back. Don't tell me how to run this train, Mr. Gatsby. Mr. Hale, I'm only asking you to read your own rules. Away from me. Boy. Boy. <laughs> yes, be complaining again? I didn't know I'd ever stop. If he snaps his finger, calls me boy, or whistles me just once more. Charlie, I thought he was a friend of yours. Just the other day, he asked me if he couldn't hire you for his butler for the end of the trip. Very funny. Yes, sir. The humor around here is getting too wet to plow. Hey, look. Uh, Duke, we didn't expect you till morning. Uh, I spent the night with a wagon train up ahead of us, so I decided to come in early. How's it look up ahead? Uh, the big blue is in flood. It's still running high, but it's starting to drop. I found good footing just above the old ford, about five trains waiting to cross. See any wagons that have turned back? Uh, the usual number. About 12, I'd say. Well, at least the leftins won't have to head back alone. When did the leftins decide to go back? It's the first we've heard about it. Yeah, Bill and me was just talking to him. You know the rules as well as I do. If they can hold us back here on level ground, the best going will have the whole trip. So that's what Gatsby was moaning about, huh? I don't need Gatsby to tell me. I've been thinking about it for the past two days. You must have been thinking about it, too, all the time you've been spending with the left-in outfit. It was my time I was spending, Chris. I haven't neglected my duties yet. I'm sorry, Bill. I know you haven't. Just that I don't like a man like Gatsby reminding me of something I already know. And it doesn't help any to have to admit he's right. There's no need for all that, Elaine. Arizona will take care of the cooking. Maybe I would like to do some of the cooking. 
Nonsense. Just because we have to spend a few months here in the wilderness is no reason you should be deprived of all the comforts of home. Is the uh, tent comfortable enough? I feel like I'm on exhibit. I've had at least 10 people come to see the bureau in the mirror. I don't doubt it. Doesn't every day that farmers, sharecroppers, and the likes of that have the opportunity of looking at a piece of furniture that's been imported from an emperor's palace? At least not tied to the back of a wagon. Martin. Martin, don't you think maybe we're overdoing this thing a little? Has Chris Hale been talking to you again? If Mr. Hale had anything to say, I'm sure he would say it to you. It's just that I don't like ostentation. Ostentation? Well, that's a fine word coming from you. I've worked day and night for 20 years to give you things equal to what you were used to in your father's home. Is this your way of pointing out that I failed you? Please, Martin, let's, let's don't talk about it now. Me and Arizona's checked everything out, Mr. Gatsby. You know, I still say this is the most expensive outfit I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a few in my day. It's the way I planned it, Colton. Man doesn't get to my position in the world of business without foresight and planning. Uh, you sure you don't want me to stow that money box in the wagon, Mr. Gatsby? You never know what kind of people you'll find on a wagon train like this, you know? Well, you can put it down to silly sentimentality if you want, but I like to have this near me at all times. It's the money box I had when I first went into business. A lot of memories locked up in there. Remember, dear, that first little hardware store, you and I working so hard together to build it up? I remember more often than you think, Martin. Yes, I imagine it was pretty difficult for you in those days, after all you'd been used to. I can't remember that I ever complained. No, 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 you never did that, but that made it all the more difficult for me. I knew I had to go on. First the one store, then three, and six, then my own factory. <laughs> and I uh, guess I shouldn't be boasting. An old man's made a big success like you, Mr. Gatsby. has got a right to boast. No, 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 I don't agree with you. But he does have a right to enjoy the fruits of that success. <laughs> my, uh, my wife here is a little concerned over that lecture that Hale gave me about being overloaded. I meant to speak to you about that, sir. If you let Chris Hale scare you into leaving any of your things behind here, you're, uh, you're falling into one of the biggest traps that, that there ever was. A trap? I don't think I understand. Well... See, Wagon Master's been doing it for a long time, sort of tricks of the trade, you might say. Scavenger follows along behind, picks up what's ever thrown out, sells it, and then him and the Wagon Master split. Aha. Uh -huh. I absolutely refuse to believe Mr. Hill would be a party to such an act. Well, I didn't mean to upset you, ma'am. It's just that your husband pays me my wages and my loyalties to him. You know, it could be that Hale's using them leftins for an excuse to slow us up. Well, if he is, I put a stop to that. The Leftons will be turning back in the morning. The Leftons are turning back? When did that happen? Well, they've been holding us up here for two days. I went to Hale and told him I couldn't have that. You couldn't have it? Haven't the Leftons anything to say about it? Lane, this is a business trip for me. Now, time is money. There is no place in business for sentiment. This is something you never seem to learn. That's right, Martin. That's something I never seem to learn. Well, thank you for warning me, Colton. You did the right thing. Well, like I say, my alert is to you, sir. I figure it's my job to see you get where you're going just as fast as you can get there. Good, good. Here we are. <laughs> Now, Chris? You can't put it off forever. Take it easy on him, will you? The little man's had a lot of disappointments in his life. Hate to see him have another. And so they all lived happily ever after. I think that's enough for tonight. I like that story, Mommy. It's like you, Daddy, and me. The good queen, the good king, and the good princess. And they had all that trouble, and then everything was good. And they all lived happy. That's what we're going to do, isn't it? That's the way it's going to be, Marie. I promised you and your mom a lot of things in my time. And sometimes I couldn't keep those promises. I just couldn't. This time it's going to be different. Of course it is, Caleb. And we're going to have a farm 
And I'm going to have a pony, because Daddy promised me. You bet you're going to have a pony. A black and white one with a big spot on his nose. It's one promise I'm going to keep, Grace. In spite of everything, I'm going to keep that one. Caleb, we've had our hard times. But I've never doubted you ever in my life. Come on, it's time for bed, young lady. Mr. Hale. Oh, come on in, Mr. Hale. We got some more coffee, ain't we, honey? Oh, there's always one more cup in the pot. Thank you. May I stay up a little while, Mommy? May I please? Can I visit with Mr. Hale? Oh, I suppose so. You and Mr. Hawks and Mr. Worcester hold quite a charm for my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. Caleb, uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Sure thing, Mr. Hale. Like I told Mr. Hawks, I want him to come right out and tell me anything I'm doing wrong. Can I stir it for you? Sure. There, it's all cool. Thank you. Now, uh, what was it you wanted to say, sir? Well, Caleb, when you joined the wagon train, I told you there were certain rules about how the wagons had to have certain equipment, how they had to keep up, Good rule. It's easy to see how it has to be. Maybe you remember I told you about the little town of Hanover near where the Independence Trail and the St. Joe Trail meet. We're almost there. You mean some of the wagons are going to have to turn back, don't you? Well, it always happens. Some people decide they don't want to go on for one reason or another. Others just aren't up to making the trip. Could be a mighty disappointing thing. A man puts all he's got into an outfit. Sets his dreams on seeing California. Getting a new start. Well, it's a matter of common sense and safety, Caleb. Well, sure it is. I understand that. When I think of how folks like me and Grace and Marie here laid out plans and staked every dream we ever had on it. It's like Grace was reading in that book, I guess. Everything seems to go wrong. And one day, uh, everything seems ahead of you. And, and you know it's going to be all right. Kind of get the feeling that the hard times were just to make you appreciate the, the good times better. It's a mighty good feeling, Mr. Hale. Well, a wagon train's no different from a town, Caleb. There have to be rules and laws. Well, I know that. It's just that laws, right as they are, Never know how people feel. Sorry as I am for whoever it is that has to turn back. I feel more sorry for the job ahead of you, Mr. Hale. I just don't think I'd have the, the heart to tell him. Again, yeah. often, please. Thank you. And when we get to California, you come and see the pony daddy's going to give me. <laughs> I sure will, Marie. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Uh, fine man, Chris Hale. Like I told him, I, uh, I don't envy him his job. I don't care about making any miles today, just see that the new people know what they're doing. There's no wagons at Signal Springs. We can camp there if you want. I don't do. You go ahead, Duke, and lay out the camp. I want to circle some of the wagons tonight just for practice. Hey, Gatsby's gonna like that. He don't like them delays, you know. I don't care what Gatsby likes. I'd the left and take the news that you were dropping them. I haven't told him yet. You hear what he said, Bill? He ain't told him yet. Yeah, I heard, but be quiet about it, will you? Keep on helping as much as we can. Sure, I'll keep an eye on it, Bill. And remember, don't go pushing Chris about it, you understand? Oh, sure. Good morning, Mr. Hale. It will be nice to get underway again. Nice and about time. I hope we've had an end to these delays. So do I, Mr. Gatsby. 
My scout tells me the big blue's running high. We may have trouble crossing. You're quite expert at these frequent speeches of doom, aren't you, Mr. Hale? Well, it wasn't meant to be a prediction of doom, Mr. Gatsby. Just a word of warning. I guess I've crossed the big blue as many times as you have, Chris. I never let it scare me. Maybe I have a higher regard for wagons and horses than you have, Jeff. Well, I ain't a man to hold a grudge over something that happened three years ago, Chris. When I took the job with Mr. Gatsby back in St. Joe, I was hoping you wasn't the man to hold a grudge either. You're working for Gatsby. I'm responsible for the whole wagon train. As long as you remember that, we won't have any trouble. Gotta get loaded. We're rolling out. Be very careful of this bureau, boys. There's another one like it in the country. for alarm now, but I've sent Duke Shannon on ahead to lay out a circle. I want you to put your wagons on that circle, nose to tail, just for practice. All right, look alive now, pass the word along. You know how to do it, don't you, Caleb? No cross lines here, Mr. Hawks. Well, I'll just do like I told you, and it'll be all right. All right, move them out. Hell, you mean we're stopping here now? It's only the middle of the day. I'm aware of the time. Do you think I paid good money to waste my time? Tell it to me later, Mr. Gatsby. I've got work to do. All right, folks, we're back. Get down on the line. Careful now, you know how much that's worth. Martin, please, there's no need to set up the whole camp. I could sleep in the wagon. Elaine, I've told you once, I will tell you again, I will not have you living like a squaw. Now, I want this whole tent set up, the entire camp. Yes, sir, Mr. Gatsby. You know, it sure seems a shame wasting half a day like this. And that always was a fail on a Chris Hale. Well, you seem to know Mr. Hale quite well. <laughs> It's pretty hard to fool a smart man like you, Mr. Gatsby. You know, I kind of figured when you hired me back in St. Joe that Chris Hale wouldn't be too happy about having me along on this trip. Man works for me, I judge him by what he does, not by whether somebody likes or dislikes him. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. Gatsby. Just like I appreciate you giving me this job. Chris Hale's kept me from getting quite a few. You want to tell me why? Well, I kind of hate to pester you with it. But I'd rather have you hear it from me. See, uh, it goes back a ways. Chris was always a little bit jealous of me. See, I was a wagon master myself. This one trip, I took a job with Chris. Well, him and me just didn't hit it off. He was always holding things up, holding drills like this one here today when there's no sense to it. Now, me, I had the reputation of running the fastest trains on the prairie. I figured folks wanted to get where they were going. So Chris and me wound up having a fight over him being so slow and... I quit the train. You know, some fellas never get over being whipped in a fist fight. I'm getting pretty sick of this constant wasting of time myself. Uh, me too, Mr. Gatsby. I like today. If I was running it, we'd have made six or eight more miles. Just like you say, time's money to a man like you. Mm -hmm. Come on, Duke, get it off there. Boy, you're strong. What are you doing? Doing? I'm a greaser, no. Oh, sweetie, what are you going? Get out of here. Would you three quit playing give me a hand here? Oh, put her right down, Duke. Put her on the axle. What's going on here? Oh, we thought we'd grease the axles of Caleb's wagon when we had the chance, Chris. He's doing real good. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Charlie, get all the people together. I want to have a general meeting. Yes, sir. You want to go, Marie? Come on. Come on. Now, let's get it on. 
Well, I guess that about covers it, unless somebody else has a question. I have a question. We make camp early today because the Lefton's wagon broke down again? The Lefton's wagon isn't broken down. The axles are being greased. Jeb Colton here tells me we could have made six or eight more miles today. What Jeb Colton didn't tell you is, if we had to gone on, we'd have been camping in the middle of a swamp. This way we avoid that. A lot of the smaller streams have been overflowing. We get an early start in the morning. We camp on the east bank of the Big Blue tomorrow night. Colton says we could have been across the Big Blue by tomorrow night. The Big Blue's in flood, Mr. Gatsby. I prefer to cross it in the morning with the sun at our back. Mr. Colton may have other ideas, but experience tells me that it's a lot safer that way. Yeah. Now, there's just one more thing I want to mention. It may not come to pass. I hope it doesn't. But we're all inclined to take along a lot more than we need. I want you to start thinking about that. You start figuring out in your own minds what you have that's absolutely essential and what you could leave behind if you had to. I presume that last remark was aimed at me. It was meant for everybody, Mr. Gatsby, but since you choose to make it personal, I've already told you I consider you overloaded. What do you suggest I dispose of, Mr. Hale? Your stove, for one thing. We have a month of treeless prairie ahead of us. You wouldn't have any wood for it anyway. I see. I imagine the stove was bringing pretty good money on the salvage market, don't they, Mr. Hale? Or perhaps you'd prefer that I left behind my bureau at Mirror. That's worth much more money than a stove. Is that another one of Mr. Colton's ideas? Don't play me for a fool, Hale. You can tell these other people to leave their belongings behind so you can pick them up later and sell them for salvage. Not me. I'm on to you. Now, you get this, Gatsby, and you get it straight. If you hold us up because you want to carry along a house full of furniture, I'll unload every stick of it and throw it out beside the trail. And as far as somebody picking it up and selling, you better look closer to home. That was Jeb Colton's business, not mine, and I fired him over it. Now, you want to deny the truth of that, Jeb. You do that, right? Here and now. I, uh, reckon Arizona's about got our supper ready, Mr. Gatsby. Yeah. Martin. Martin, Mr. Hale was only trying to explain what, what could happen. We can do without the stove, and as far as that bureau's concerned... Lorraine, I still make the decisions in this family. Or do you want to take that away from me, too? You know, it's a funny thing. You let a man know that you're onto him doing something crooked, and he'll turn right around and accuse you of doing the same thing. I bet you've seen that happen in business a lot, haven't you, Mr. Gatsby? Yes. Yes, I have. A thousand times. Gatsby? Marie. Well, how nice of you to come and see me. Come on in. Just like Mommy was reading in the book. Fairyland. Oh, well, not hardly, I'm afraid. And you're the fairy princess. Imprisoned in a tower. Did you say something? No, no, I didn't. Come here, Adam. Let me see what a nice big girl you are. My goodness, and your hands are so soft and warm. I wish I had a little girl like you. Didn't you ever have a little girl? No, I never did. But if I had, I'd want her to be just like you. Mrs. Gatsby, can I tell you a secret? Well, if you tell me a secret, it won't be a secret anymore, will it? It could be your and my secret. Oh. All right, all right. Tell me. I don't want a pony. What? Well, I thought that's all you were dreaming about, getting to California and having a pony. That's all Daddy dreams about. That's different, isn't it? Well, what would you like, then? I'd like a new doll and Mommy to have fine furniture, just like you have here. Why don't you tell your Daddy about it? My daddy, he, he likes to do nice things for me and mommy. I love my daddy. And if I told him I didn't want him to do something that he thinks is nice, 
He wants to give me the pony, don't you see? I see, Marie. I know exactly what you mean. You, you better be getting on home now. Your mommy will be worried about you. And you, you promise that you'll come and see me again, will you? I like you, Mrs. Gatsby. I like you very much. I, I like you too, Marie. I like you too. The Lepton child in here? Yes, do you object? Object? <laughs> Why should I object? Am I that much of an ogre? I think she's an adorable child. I like children, Elaine. You should know that. I often wish we had children of our own. So have I. Things might have been a lot different. But then I thought of how things have turned out. I wondered how it would be dragging a child along on a trip like this. Does a man have a right to do a thing like that? Always so many memories wrapped up in children. You're not saying we don't have memories. Look around you, all this furniture. Oh, Martin, I don't mean that. It's just that a, a child grows with you. It changes and shares with you. These things, the bureau and the money box, Ed, dead things out of a past that's gone. Well, I don't think that at all. I don't think you do either. But you've talked about it yourself. Our first little store, working together, dreaming. Your father swearing to high heaven that we'd starve to death and that it'd serve us right. Somehow I think those were the best times. The happiest day of my life was when you could stop working and I bought the house and this furniture. I remember your father standing right in front of this very mirror. He wouldn't look at me. He just stood there and said, Martin, you have done well. It must have killed him to have to admit that. That's what I knew what I had to do. It wasn't good enough for him to just say that I had done well. I had to do better than he had. I had to do better. I had to have a bigger house than the one that, the one that I took you away from. That's what I knew I had to do. Don't you understand that? Martin. Martin, I, I tried hard to understand you. But you kept driving yourself. And now you're doing the same thing again. Always pushing, always hurrying, needing to get to California. We had everything. Why did you keep wanting more? Why couldn't you have been satisfied? You do blame me, don't you? Oh, no, I'm not blaming you. Not in the way you think. I knew this would come up. I've been waiting for you to say it. Please, wait a minute. I it was all very easy for you to say that nothing else mattered. Just you and I, that was all that mattered. But I warned you that someday you would throw this up to me. Now you've said it. Martin, please, you know no, I didn't no, mean it in the no, way I said no, it. No, Elaine. Martin, please. <laughs> well, Caleb, looks like you're the first ones about ready to roll this morning. You gonna make it the teams are out of me yet, Mr. Hawks? Look at me, Uncle Bill, look. What are you doing up there, sweetheart? I'm helping Daddy. You're gonna have a pony, so you gotta learn how to handle horses. Ain't that right, Mr. Hawks? Makes sense, Caleb. You be careful, will you?
always did hate peeling onions. You want to roll them out? No, the day's half gone now, Bill. Another hour won't make any difference. Give the leftins a chance to be alone together. Well, I guess that is best. If I'd sent them back two days ago when I first considered it. Start that, Chris. You know, that isn't so. These things either happen or they don't. Uh, it doesn't make it any easier. I took a look at the Lefton wagon. I don't think it can be saved. I've talked to several people. They all want to do what they can. Thought maybe if we could get enough money together. You mean you want to try to buy them a new outfit? Well, we might be able to get a wagon in Hanover. We might be able to get a whole outfit from somebody who decided not to go on. Trouble is, most of these folks haven't got any more ready cash than the Lefton. You can count me in. Take it out of my wages. Well, I got nothing to go back to, Chris. We just could raise enough money. Well, I figure it's worth a try. Don't mention it to the left and so on. Thanks very much. Now. Pardon me, please. I don't mean any disrespect, you know that. But I think we ought to get underway, get away from here. Uh, that's right, Mr. Gatsby. Have a tragedy like this, get away from it quick. That's the way I used to run my trains. Sometimes I wish you were running this one. Well, I take that as a compliment, sir. Now, as a matter of fact, me and Arizona were talking this morning about how it's a shame a businessman like you is being held up by a bunch of farmers like this. What we thought ought to be done about it. Of course, ain't none of my business, but... Mm, you work for me. You have a right to make a suggestion. Well, it's just that you've got a right to leave this train any time you want to if you don't like how it's run. You mean go on to California alone? Not all the way to California. Maybe a week or so alone, that'd be all right. But what I was figuring, with an outfit as good as yours here, me pushing it, we could join up with a smaller outfit, say a bunch of businessmen like yourself. See, those smaller outfits move fast. And if you wanted to, we could be in California a whole month ahead of Chris Hale's outfit. Like you say, Mr. Gatsby, time is money to a man like you. Yeah, I uh, have to think of my wife's comfort. Oh, sure you do. Well, like I say, it was just one of those thoughts a fellow has, you know? Mm. Uh, yonder comes Hale now. Guess he finally decided to move out. Won't make many miles today, that's for sure. Mm. Well, I see you already heard what we're up to. Some of the folks were only able to give a dollar or so, and others couldn't give anything in the way of money, but they've offered to share supply. You expect me to give you money? Uh, we're just about $50 short of being able to buy the Lefton's brand new outfit. Now, I know that's quite a lot, if you don't want to put up all of it. I won't put up a dime of it. Well, that's your privilege. We kind of figured... I don't care what you figured. Now look, these Leftons have been a jinx to this outfit ever since they joined the train. Now, it's not that I'm not sorry for them, for their loss. I am, but this is just wasting money. No, I won't give you a cent, you understand? You've made it quite plain. And one other thing. I'm sick and tired of waiting around here. When are we leaving? When I decide it's time. I had to say that. What else could I say? You didn't have to say it that way. Oh, now, look, Elaine, please, you... Don't touch me. Elaine. All right, I'm ready. Let's join one of those other trains. Now you're doing the smart thing, Mr. Gatsby. We can leave any time you say so, sir. Good. Stopping here. Because this is as far as me and Arizona go, Mr. Gatsby. What? Now, hand me down that money box. Now, wait a minute. You, you can't do this. 
Oh, we figure we can, Mr. Gatsby. We figured it right from the first. Now, please hand me down that box. Now, wait a minute. Now, Colton, please, you've got to listen to me. Martin! Colton, please, listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the money? There isn't any. It took every cent I had to buy this outfit to pay your wages. Why, you no good double crossing. All the time strutting around, putting on airs, and leading me on. When you didn't have one more cent than anybody else in that busted down wagon train. Why, I ought to put a bullet through you. Now, wait, no. Martin! Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. You can't leave us here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, can I, Mr. Gatsby? Well, I'm going to. And if you get lonesome, you can stand up and tell this open country what a great big man you are. Oh, no! And just think, I loaded and unloaded that thing twice a day for a week. Are you all, darling, Elaine, Elaine, you're all I have. You, please, please, Elaine. Oh, darling, darling. I, I thought when, when I heard the shot. No, 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 darling, it was you. You're the one I'm worried about. Darling, 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 darling. It's all right. It's all right now. Feeling up to it, I think we'd better start on. We can't just stay here. I almost wish we could. You realize this is the first time we've talked, I mean, really talked in years? I've wanted to talk to you many times, but I was always afraid of what I'd have to say. Bad enough knowing that you knew all about me and my failures, but to, but to face up to it and talk about it. I'm your wife, Martin. Do you think I'm your wife only in good times? I always wanted you to have everything. And when I lost it all, being broke, failure at my age. Martin, if, if we're going to measure our love in terms of, of stores and factories, big houses and fine furniture, then, then we've really failed, both of us. You're living a lie, Martin. Doesn't that mean anything? No. No. No, it does not mean anything. Not if I can get back to where I was. It... I know what it's like in business. You saw it yourself, Elaine. When I started downhill, they swarmed in on me. As long as I'm down, they won't stop kicking me. Well, I'm not going to let them know that I'm down. We'll start all over again, and we'll get it back. Martin, let's go back to the wagon train and tell them the truth. Let's really start over. Can't face it. I can't face up to those people back there any more than I could face up to our friends back home. Let me please at least pretend to be the man that I once was. I don't want you to pretend. I want you to be the man I married. I want that more than anything else in this world. There's a wagon just over that rise. Looks like the Gatsby outfit. Gatsby outfit? What, are they in trouble? 
No, it didn't look it. Just sitting there. Maybe Gatsby got some sense and decided to wait for it. What's wrong, Gatsby? Where's Colton in Arizona? Well, I guess I guess you get the last laugh, Hale. Colton robbed me, and then he and Arizona rode off and left us here. Robbed you? How long ago? Did you see which way they went? It was about an hour ago. They headed off towards those breaks by the river. Well, Chris, Duke and I know those breaks pretty well. If they've only been gone an hour, we can find them. You could hide up in there. You couldn't see them, but they could see you. Are they carrying rifles? Yes, on their saddles. Well, we'll see if we can flush them out. Well, now, wait. I, if, if, if it's going to be all that dangerous... Playing with guns is always dangerous. All right, be careful, both of you. No, stop. Now, look, let's... Let's just forget about this whole thing. I, I won't have anybody shot over my loss. I'll, uh... I'll just absorb it. We're not doing you any favor, Mr. Gatsby. You were robbed. It's my responsibility to try and get your money back. Tell them, Martin. Tell them or there's no use in you and me trying to start over again. I wasn't robbed. They didn't get your money box? Money box? There never was anything in the money box. Why do you suppose I wouldn't give anything to the leftists? You think it was because I didn't want to? Well, it wasn't. Because I didn't have anything to give. Now, why aren't y'all laughing? Is it funny enough for you? You want more? I lost my stores, my factory, and they took my home away from me? And we've got nothing left. That make you happy? Pull your wagon back in line if you'd like to, Mr. Gatsby. I've tried to tell you I have nothing left. Twenty years of work wiped out. But none of you would know how it feels to lose everything, would you? I think some would. I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Lefton. I, I, I didn't mean... I didn't know what I was saying. I'm just not man enough to face up to it, that's all. Mr. Lefton, please. How does a man face up to losing everything? You just keep right on going, I guess, Mr. Gatsby. I don't know for sure either. We'd like to help you, any way we can. My wife's good with the cooking, I could spell you off driving. I need you, Elaine. I'm here, Martin. I've been here all the time. Sure wouldn't want to be in Jeb Colton's boots. He's bound to have seven years' bad luck. 